everyone, welcome back to my kitchen. I was trying to ask my daughter what kind of creative intro I could do for my cooking videos and she's told me to say, yo, 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 what's up? So what's up people? Tonight we are cooking chicken pot pie. Uh, first thing we're using is refrigerated pie crust. You can make your own pie crust, but don't ask me how to do that. I have no idea. This is the easiest. This package comes with two pie crusts, so that's perfect for what we need. I'm using a um, ceramic dish for this, and what I've done is spray it with nonstick cooking spray. So we're going to first par bake the um, bottom pie crust so that it doesn't get soggy when we put all of our filling in. So we want to unroll the pie crust. And I don't quite have a pie pan here, so sometimes there's a little manipulating, but I'm just going to kind of stretch it out a little bit to have it go up the sides. And then we're just going to poke it with a fork a little bit so that when it bubbles up, um, it, won't, it won't bubble up too much, I should say. So I've got my oven to 450 which is the temperature that the pie crust says. So whatever pie crust you're using, you can buy a pre-made, you know, in a pie shell. That works too. So just follow the, the temperature on the directions. So we're going to put that in the oven just for a few minutes while we chop up some vegetables for our pot pie. And what we're using today is a mirepoix, which is carrots, onions, and celery. I know that's a big fancy cooking term, which is not usual for me, but... I'm learning new things. So um, I've already did the done the carrots and the onions, so we're just gonna do the celery. The tip I use for cleaning celery is I don't wash it under water directly. Sometimes it kind of makes the celery a little, I don't know if soggy is the right word, but you don't need all that extra water in your vegetables. So I just use a wet paper towel to wipe down the inside of the celery stalks and the outside. And you can see what that does. It works much better than just rinsing it, okay? So we'll just start off by cutting off the ends, which are usually not great. And of course, these wide ends. So those we'll throw away. And then the celery, I'll just cut down the middle. Again, you can leave these whole. I mean, this wide, depends on how big you like it. But we'll just give these a chop. And you can use whatever vegetables you'd like in a pot pie. These are pretty traditional, and sometimes there's potatoes in a pot pie, but I don't usually put that in mine. So we'll just add this. I'm gonna get my burner started here. We're gonna put it on about a medium-high heat. Um, get that going. We're gonna saute these just in um, some olive oil. And I did save my celery leaves. I always do that. It's a good tip. This, this is a great herb right here. You can add these to soups. We're going to add it along with the rest of our herbs, which I have some fresh thyme here. So I'll cut that up. Let's cut up the celery leaves. And then the thyme, I got some fresh thyme. You typically do not want the stems, they're a little woody, so in order to pull the thyme off of the stem, you would just want to pull it backwards, like with your fingernail, gently with your finger, and, and the leaves will fall right off. So these in ones you can do. I already did most of it. These ones are a little short, but you can see the idea of it. Now there is some fancy herb strippers out there probably, but nothing like your own hands for the best kitchen tools, right? <laughs> okay. So that's probably just a tablespoon or so of fresh thyme and then our celery leaves. So we're going to put that in a little bit later. For the chicken for the pot pie, I have used a rotisserie chicken. My husband so expertly picked the chicken for me and there goes Olivia trying to get a piece. I guess that's a benefit you have when you're the camera person, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> So you can use whatever chicken you prefer. If you prefer only white meat, you can take some chicken breast and boil those in advance and cut them up for your pot pie. You could use just thighs, use any meat you like. 
Um, I prefer sort of a quick and easy. I work full time and so coming home at night I don't have a lot of time to cook a big you know two hour dinner. So this is quick and easy. Rotisserie chicken is the way to go. They, the grocery stores put a lot of hard work in seasoning these just perfectly. So we'll use that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add my vegetables to our pan over here with, with the olive oil. And we'll get these going. You always want to preheat your, your pan so you can get that sizzle, which I don't have yet. I didn't turn it on early enough, but that's okay. It will heat up. So, give these a stir. Now, as far as seasonings go, up to you. Uh, like I said, we're going to use the fresh thyme and the celery leaves, but I also, of course, do salt and pepper. And this is another one of my favorite spices from the Savory Spice Store. It's called the Wash Park Seasoning. It's sort of just a great season all. This one has uh, black pepper, sugar, garlic, salt, red and green bell pepper, shallots, parsley, chervil, and spices. Don't ask me what chervil is, but trust me. Tastes good, smell good. So we'll give that a little sprinkle in here just to get it going. Okay. We will let these cook up, and then we'll start putting our pot pie together. Okay, so these vegetables are just about done. You can see how the onions are getting translucent. <laughs> I can't say that word. Translucent. Okay, so we are going to start adding our liquid for the pot pie. We're going to be making a roux, and if you're not sure what that is, I'm here to teach you. See, two fancy words today, mirepoix and a roux. So a roux will be a thickening agent to make our sauce. And in order to do that, you need equal parts of flour and fat, either um, butter or oil. So I've got a couple tablespoons of butter here that we want to melt. I just turn this down to about a medium. Okay, then I've got a couple tablespoons of flour here sprinkle in and you want to get that mixed up. You always, when you're adding flour to something, you want to make sure you cook it through. You do not want to have a raw flour taste in what you're making. So we'll just get that butter still melting through, but you can see now it's kind of getting a, a pastiness to the vegetables. And then we're going to be adding about a cup of chicken broth here. And you slowly add a liquid to a roux so you get that thickening going. And then you add a little bit of liquid at a time. And you let that heat through. And as it boils, it gets thicker. If you add it all at once, it won't come up to the right thickness. So you can see as we're starting to get a little sauce here, and it's thickening up nicely. Okay, you just keep stirring it around. And in anything you're making, like when I make my macaroni and cheese, I do this. So obviously we don't have uh, vegetables in it, but I make a little roux with milk and flour and butter. And that helps me get a nice, thick, cheesy sauce. Okay, let me go ahead and add the rest of this. And we'll just keep stirring. And you just want to let that heat through. But you can see we're starting to get a nice gravy there. Okay. Now I do want to add some fresh ground pepper. And this Wash Park seasoning that I added has does have salt in it, so we don't um, need to add any salt here. You can if you're, you know, a salt freak. I do have some friends that are salt freaks. Okay, so this looks great. So now I'm going to be adding uh, a small can of cream of chicken soup. This also has great flavor and will also act as a thickening agent for that gravy. So we'll mix that in. I am going to 
going to add a touch of milk. Okay, so we'll just add a splash in there. All right. Now, if you don't want to go through the process of making a roux, you can just use a large can of cream of chicken soup as your whole base, and that works totally fine. Once it cooks down, it thins out, so it's not so um, you know thick like it, as it comes out of the can. But as it heats through, it makes a perfect gravy. Okay, now I'm going to add our fresh herbs. We had our celery leaves and our fresh thyme. So we'll sprinkle that in. And then we'll add our chicken. Once this is all heated through, your time in the oven won't be that long. It's just gonna be enough time to um, cook your crust, which we did, by the way, take out the um, crust from the oven, the bottom crust that went in for about 10 minutes. You just have to keep an eye on it. Oh, this looks so good. Okay, and last thing we're gonna add is some peas. Again, personal preference. This is just about a half a can of peas. You can use frozen peas if you prefer, or no peas. Okay. So we'll get that going. And then what we're going to be doing is adding it straight to our pan here. Now again, like I said, this is not the uh, typical pie-shaped pot pie, but that's all right. This is going to be our top crust, so I'm just getting that ready. So I'm probably just going to let this go for about five minutes and then add it right into our pie crust. Okay, this has been going for about five minutes, just getting nice and bubbly. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put that into our pie crust. If I don't drop the pan, it's extremely heavy. There we go. Oh yeah, those nice big chunks of chicken. Mm. <laughs> Mm, she said. Okay, then let's just put our top crust on. Nothing fancy here. One of these days, maybe I'll make some homemade pizza crust for you. Just kidding. I don't do that. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to put that in here. Kind of tuck a little. You know, you can spend time and make it a pretty little crust, but it's not what I do. Now, one thing you do want to do is poke it. You're welcome to do fancy things with your pie crust. You can cut out little hearts or do whatever you want. But if you ask your grandma what to do with a pie crust, she'll tell you to use a fork. That's all you need. Okay? So that is it there. We're going to put it in the oven. Let me turn off this burner. Put it in the oven until the crust is nice and golden brown, which will probably be 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, can't wait to eat that. Oh yeah, I think we are looking good. You can see that bubbling out of there. Looks pretty good. All right. Let's dip into this puppy. Get down there, that bottom crust. See all those vegetables and that nice gravy? That right there is Donna's pot pie. Let's eat, folks!